Hello, everybody. I'm Susan Moffat. I'm project director of the Global Urban Humanities Initiative at UC Berkeley. And I just want to thank you all again uh, for being here on behalf of the Berkeley and the UCLA teams. Um, in uh, a minute, uh, Greg Niemeyer is going to present the finalists uh, for our uh, See Through Maps competition and exhibit. Um, um, it's on this. Um, and, uh, but before that, just a little bit of housekeeping. I apologize to all of you who are looking for coffee and didn't find it. I know that's very sad. Um, but it's, it's thanks uh, to the great response and this very full house that we have. Um, it's great that you all are here. But again, at lunch, I would ask um, if you might take one sandwich uh, instead of two um, until we see that everybody gets their, their first helping. Um, no, it's. It's, it's called One See-Through Maps, and it's on this. It's, I put a one in front of it. This is it? Yeah. So while we're uh, pulling up uh, the uh, presentation on uh, our See-Through Maps uh, exhibit, I just want to highlight the fact that part of why we wanted to include a, an exhibit and a competition in association with the symposium was to give an opportunity for live conversations with people who are making maps today. At the same time, we're taking a critical look at mapping. Um, we have in the room uh, many people who are part of the kind of great democratization of mapping, who are from many walks of life, who uh, submitted to our exhibit. And uh, as uh, Greg introduces uh, the finalists and also some of the honorable mentions, the, the notable maps that are included both online uh, and viewable on your laptops, um, if uh, you have them here, or also on the monitors uh, out in the lobby um, and also uh, in print on the walls, uh, I would just like the, uh, the map makers to identify themselves so that people can come and talk with you um, and ask you why you did and how you did what you did. Um, so I'm going to hand it over now to uh, Greg Niemeyer from the Berkeley Center for New Media, which uh, is kindly co-sponsoring uh, the first prize for this exhibit. It's been fun uh, to work together with the, the Center for New Media uh, talking about these maps. It was, uh, it was a, a great, uh, fun experience, and I hope you all have fun looking at the maps, too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is the third conference I'm in in a space of a week where uh, we talk about new media at UC Berkeley and they're standing room only, so this is very exciting. Um, uh, the question for, that we started with with the see-through see maps is what kinds of, uh, what is a map? Uh, is a map a mirror? Is it a window? Is it a, a guide? Is it perhaps an interface between the values we hold and the landscape we find those values in? Is it an analytic tool? Is it propaganda? Is it eye candy? And which maps actually tell us about their own state, which maps are self-aware. And uh, so we were looking for uh, exactly those maps that are transparent about their strategies of representation so that somebody looking at the map can also learn about how it was made, a map that marks its own making, uh, maps that are upfront about their agenda, about the values they represent. Uh, no hidden values, no, no, um, no secrets. Innovative in representing space and time. Um, how do we map that the fact that the world changes around us and that we change within it? Um, can we say something about map making today? What is new about it? And finally, um, can we uh, say something about the narrative of the making of the map itself? And so we have um, uh, selected seven finalists, and uh, the seven finalists are going to be presented now. And as you're eating lunch, you may consider uh, that you not only feed your body, but also your mind, and look at the beautiful maps around you, and uh, wonder which of these uh, finalists will be uh, the winner, because the winner will be announced after lunch. So there's a suspension here. <laughs> OK, so uh, uh, I hope it won't ruin your digestion, uh, the tension. Um, but uh, the first finalist is Nancy Milholland's work. Um, San Francisco public, public art map. It looks like this. It's also hanging in a physical copy over there, although it's really an interactive map that should be used online. And in it, you can find public art, but also you can add your own discoveries of public art to the map. So it's a map that grows as much as you use it, as much as you add information to it. That information will be reflected to the next user, and it's a beautiful project. Nancy, so, would you like to raise your hand? Nancy, are you here? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank you. So, 
Then uh, the next map is uh, called Far Rock by Aaron Rice. And Far Rock um, describes a, a landscape in uh, New York, uh, in an area in New York. And it has uh, uh, two levels of meaning. One is it's got the public uh, meaning of where things are in the world, but also the private meaning of somebody's neighborhood and how that person experienced that neighborhood intimately. And uh, there's a, do, a layer of interpretation there that the, um, the map that results from this person's intimate account ultimately looks like a, f a fetus, a baby in a wound, womb. Um, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful uh, formal uh, 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 layer that's not always obvious in, in maps. And then in the middle of the womb is the hospital. So it's, it's inside out in some way. Um, uh, then we have the anti-eviction mapping project by Jennifer Fieber, Olivia Jackson, and Aaron McElroy. But you know what? I made a mistake. I'm going back one. And we wanted to give the author of this map a round of applause. Is he here? But he's not here. OK. OK. <laughs> Virtual applause. So. Next, we have a very political project, the Anti-Eviction Mapping Project, which tracks, uh, uh, tracks where, where people were evicted from since 1997 in San Francisco and going all the way to 2002, I believe. And uh, the map is also online. And if you uh, play with this time slider here, can I show it here? Oh. With the time slider here, um, you can animate the uh, progression of evictions like a, like a terrible disease spreading across the city. Like a, and it's very dramatic to watch. But of course, it has a very particular point of view. And uh, so, so that's one, uh, one finalist. Benjamin, uh, and this one is uh, made by uh, Jennifer Fieber, Olivia Jackson, Erin McElroy. Erin, you're here. OK, great. Thank you. So please check this out online. It's a beautiful work. And uh, the next map is the undetermined, the real and ideal in Berenezki, the Benjamin Sherbart's map. And this is a map that uh, uh, shows what kinds of developments are intended and what kinds of de developments exist. But the point of the map is that we really can't tell which developments are real and already there and which developments are going to be there as a project. So, so the challenge is uh, to obscure, and the maps do that often, to obscure the future and the present and to obscure how impactful a future project might be on the environment that it's placed in. So, so um, it's a very uh, philosophical map, I would say. And uh, I uh, think the author is not present, but we still can give Benjamin Sherbarth an applause <laughs> for bringing. So, so as you can see in the detail here, it's not clear which parts of the city are already built and which are planned. And that exact tension is, is the, uh, the question that this map brings, brings us to. Uh, the next one is the open street map, uh, Every Line Ever, Every Point Ever by Alan McConchie. And uh, this map here uh, is about the uh, uh, open source mapping project uh, that uh, uh, people over the years have been Ma making efforts to add information to this map. And we can see every edit of every map. So you can literally see in this map the process by which it was drawn through a volunteers contributing information to the map database. And uh, uh, here's a detail of that. And um, next, I'd like to uh, are let's the authors here. Yes, um, Alan McConchie. So it's, uh, it's beautiful to look at. I like the, the Delft tile theme as well. So the, the beautiful Del blue Delft tile aesthetic, so it works perfectly. And then we have uh, Matt Clatney's uh, San Francisco Bicycle System, which is uh, a, a virtual subway. And it looks like this. And it shows a logical connection between points in, the, in, the, in San Francisco that are easy to get to by bike. So it avoids the hills. It optimizes trajectories. And it's, it doesn't have any street names in it, because, because uh, maybe the bicyclist here thinks of himself as on a particular trajectory or routine, an optimal route, and just follow the stations, the virtual stations. So it's a map that um, puts a different layer of, of uh, functionality into the city and points out which ways are easy to navigate by bike. And uh, do we have the author present? Matt Cladney is here, I believe. <coughs> yes? No? <laughs> ah, whatever. All right. OK, next, uh, next is a very interesting map that uh, layers uh, the ethnographic intimate experience of hand-holding against the political experience of uh, the acceptance of uh, a display of gay activity in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 
here, a hands-on routine by Omar Mismar in Beirut. So in Beirut, uh, traveling through the city um, in a car, uh, there are times where it is apparently safe and comfortable to hold hands, and there are times where it's not. And that is the political reality of the city. But of course, when you talk to your loved ones, sometimes topics come up that don't match holding hands. For example, gossiping about another person. And, uh, and uh, so then you let go of this per the other person's hand because you're, you're not feeling that way. And, uh, and so both these things, both the very intimate and the very political, are combined in this uh, amazing interface of the city, uh, describing an experience in the city of Beirut, which is both political and personal. So, and I think Omar is here, right? A round of applause. Thank you. And actually, Omar is sitting right in front of his own map. So, so, and and is is your partner here? Are you holding hands right now or not? No, no. Okay. Uh, add that to the map. <laughs> All right, and here's a detail that indicates graphically red means hand holding and uh, blue and teal or whatever that color is, petrol blue, uh, means uh, holding hands apart. And it's got a lot of comments about right, conversations there. It's really a lot of fun. So these are the seven finalists that we have. And after lunch, you will be, uh, we will reveal who is the true winner. And I have... Um, these are the other I have a list here of who are also here. Yeah, and so so I wanted to point out Greg Castillo, Ravi uh, Chok Sambachai, uh, uh, Jessica Kung Dreyfus, Gabriel K. Prelian, Nick Doty, and Natasha May Ong. Um, they're all here. Let's give them all a collective round of applause. And also Yo Yo Kawano is here as well, uh, who has an online map available. So so who, who who reviewed all these maps? We'd like to thank Tony Cascardi, of course, and. Uh, and Andrew Godby here, a grad student, Rama Gottfried, a grad student, Darren Jensen, a grad student, Susan Moffat, uh, myself, Valkyrie, a grad student, and Jennifer Volch. Uh, thanks so much for putting, weighing in on the uh, uh, analysis of these maps and uh, careful consideration. And the winner will be announced after lunch. Enjoy. Thank you. We're about to begin the afternoon session, and uh, I have an envelope here. And in this envelope is the name of the winner. Don't you want to know the name of the winner? Thank you very much. All right, so to be honest, uh, our grad students felt that we should not give any one prize because all finalists were equally compelling. And they decided they wanted to uh, split the prize among all seven equally, but we felt that's not how we started. We said we would give one prize and one prize only, and so um, we added another layer of uh, deliberations, and uh, uh, Tony Cascardi and I and uh, Jennifer Walsh, we, we felt that um, the true winner of this prize was, in fact, let's see, first prize goes to Alan McConchy. For Alan, are you here? All right. Congratulations. We, we looked at your map and we were deeply moved by the fact that the map shows its own making. And it shows areas that are contested and areas of agreement and areas of concern because each person's analysis of the landscape yields exactly one line. And the fat blue lines yield um, show that many people were thinking about this, but it also shows errors. Sometimes people made errors and drew streets where there really just was water, or um, uh, it, it made U-turns, or uh, maybe this is a ship route, or zigzag lines. And, and the aesthetics of the errors um, oftentimes are not uh, uh, added into the final product anymore, because as we heard earlier, there's an issue with raw data, and raw data is often full of errors. And uh, in here, I see a little bit of the beginning of that. I also see in it the promise of us making our own maps. And so that, that fundamental particip participatory aesthetic is celebrated here, and that's why we are awarded you the first prize. So congratulations, and give us a few words about what you uh, Thank you, everyone. Thanks for, oh, I, have, I have to hold this. <laughs> What a, what a burden. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is great. I mean, I, in some ways, I feel like I didn't even really make this map or didn't even have to make this map. Um, obviously, it all comes from the thousands of contributors to OpenStreetMap as a, as a wiki project that has been going on for several years, um, which is, I feel like, the kind of thing that we're, we're seeing with the new, the new era of whatever revolutionized mapping where it's now um, in the hands of the people, theoretically. OpenStreetMap has a lot of that promise to it, but it also has a lot of interesting problematics, too, that are part of what I find interesting. Um, not just the errors, but 
who might be editing and where they might be editing and what their interests are. Um, this comes out of some of my uh, dissertation research where I'm studying uh, basically the social dynamics of crowdsourced map making. So who were the people who first edited OpenStreetMap? Does the editing behavior change over time as parts of the map get filled in? Those are the kind of things I'm trying to study. So I had a database of every edit that had ever happened in OpenStreetMap. Because it's an open source project, you can just download all of that stuff. Um, and I had that loaded into a database, and one day I accidentally printed everything. It displayed it all on the map. And so this is a bit of a refinement of that. Um, it was never really, the database was never really designed to show everything. You were expected to pick a snapshot or to style the roads based on some attributes. But if you just print everything and print them all really lightly so that they just build up and build up and build up, you, you do see some kind of information about what people were, were focused on as a group um, and what they were focused on as individuals, these individual traces that maybe no one else really worked on. You also see how it's a human effort but collaborating with machines and the computers and the data. There's a lot of errors in here that seem to be maybe from um, an early version of the OpenStreetMap software, like broke something and it got fixed later. So you see how people are constantly working with the tools um, and the data to produce something collaboratively. Uh, yeah, so I do, I invite you to like definitely dig around on the online versions. It's like really great to try to find little things. Um, in the London version, so I, I mapped the SF and London because that's where OSM started. You can find, uh, there's one spot where someone vandalized the map and wrote their name in it. And I don't know how long that stayed on the map, whether it was deleted within a few days, but uh, definitely dig around on the London map and see if you can find that spot. Um, thank you again, um, and thanks to OpenStreetMap and all the OpenStreetMappers. Thanks. So, so there's, we understand that there is some interest in doing this again next year, so I'd like to get a, a brief uh, applause sound for how large the interest is in repeating this kind of competition a year from now. Should we do it again or should we not do it again? All right, good. We'll do it again. I'd like I'd like to point out one more thing. There's no nations in these maps. There's always only cities. So maybe cities are the new nations. And uh, with that, I give it back to Susan Moffat. <laughs>